Hey guys, we are back at Taffington Boathouse, and today we have quite a bit to get to. We have to build a couple of shops, as well as the main house and the boathouse. Now, I know the video is a couple of days late this week. I had some trouble with my game, but I think I got it all sorted out. I'm really happy with the way this build turned out, and uh, I'm really excited to share it with you. So let's get started, shall we? Gonna go ahead and start things off uh, with the homemaker mod and we're gonna build a little stall for Doc Weathers. Now the house here at Tappington is a little bit taller than the manila walls so um, that's why we're inside of homemaker and we're gonna use these walls that were designed for multi-story structures. They have this little beam that runs across the top it'll just help fill out the space a little bit more and block off uh, you know the stall. Just a matter of getting the wall lined up using the floorboard and the railing there, and then just raising it to the right height. So now we're gonna go ahead and add a cross beam, just to kind of help us section off the stall here. And these come from uh, Thematic and Practical, they're in the vendor section. And we're gonna go ahead and just line this up with the beams and then move it to the middle. Um, I thought that was gonna be the end there, but I'm actually gonna put that in the middle of the stall. I like I said to act as a divider and we're gonna go ahead and hang some uh, curtains off of it. Just a matter of lining it up with the beam. Nice. Now I originally wanted to put a doorway in here to section off the surgery area from the you know um, sales area but it's just too narrow so we'll have to use these shower curtains instead and it kind of fits with the uh, medical theme. I really wanted to use the uh, the curtain there with the blood splatter on it but they're just too short so just wouldn't work here and then we're gonna go ahead and glitch uh, two of these curtains together just to make it a little wider there provide a little bit more privacy now for the end cap for this stall and we're once again in the vendor section of thematic and practical they have these little half walls and I like using this one with the mesh on it just provides a little bit of extra light that is gonna be the surgery area so the more you can see the better then we're going to go ahead and add one of these um, cross beams to the to the end cap here just so it matches the other cross beam there and kind of fills out the area a little bit just a matter of lining it up so it looks like it's attached to the wall nice directly across from doc weathers we're going to have a shop here for lucas miller and we're going to go ahead and use the um, corrugated steel walls just so it matches with the boathouse and almost acts as an extension of it. Just a matter of lining it up so it doesn't clip with the existing wall. And once you get that in place, almost got it, um, the other wall will just snap right to it. There we go. So most of the roof just snapped into place, but it's not quite long enough to reach the existing roof. So we're gonna have to use um, another roof piece and just glitch it into place, just so it you know, provides enough shelter. Now I'm not gonna show you all of the roof pieces. Um, it's basically the same technique. Now with all this corrugated steel, it was kind of starting to look a little boring. So we're gonna go ahead and use some of these pieces from the warehouse tab that are you know, falling apart corrugated steel. And then we're gonna patch it with some wood bits similar to how we did with uh, Trash Can Carla's shop. It's just a matter of lining it up and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and take some of these half walls from uh, Homemaker, I believe, and we're just gonna kind of glitch them together just so it looks like they repaired this structure with, you know, whatever pieces they were able to find and wood's probably the most plentiful uh, resource here. Looks pretty good. Onto the main house. Now, the only part of the main house that needed to be repaired was the roof, uh, well, with the exception of one interior wall. And for the roof, I opted to use uh, floorboards. That way we can just kind of, you know, have a living space up above. Just a matter of lining it up with these little uh, quarter floors and the rest just kind of snap together. 
and then we'll use the full size flooring to uh, finish out the rest of the roof. So here we go with a uh, full size shack floor and we just need to line it up with the edge of the roof there and then just make sure it doesn't clip through with the exterior too much. That looks pretty good. With the first board lined up, these other ones snap uh, right in place. Of course, they keep wanting to snap to those quarter floor boards, but I eventually get it in there. It's looking pretty good. So now we're going to build a staircase so we have an easy way to get up here. Now go ahead and place down these quarter boards, and that actually ends up being a mistake because adding the staircase to that, it just sticks out too far, and I keep bumping into that what is that, a cross beam there, and it just blocks me from walking up the stairs easily. Yeah, you can see there, it's a little rough. So just removing one of those boards and then placing the stairs down allows me to get up pretty easily. Of course, we're still going to need to add a floorboard there just to cover up the uh, existing structure. So a good technique is uh, to actually have snapping on just so it lines it up nice and straight and then you can turn snapping off and uh, slide it into place. Nice. Now we're going to go ahead and cover up that staircase there. We're going to use one of these walls from the warehouse tab. Just go down and make sure it's not poking through. Now it's just a matter of lining it up with the floorboards, getting it in there nice and straight. Now I try flipping it around this other way. I think it would end up looking better overall. I just don't like the way the uh, floorboards poke through that steel like that. It just looks off to me. Yeah, definitely looks off. Yeah, that's much better. Now to repair the interior wall, we're gonna go back to the wood tab and uh, go ahead and grab some of these wood walls just to repair that. I think it'll be a good contrast to the bombed out wall that's in there as well as the green walls that are surrounding it. Just a matter of uh, lining it up, getting it so it doesn't clip through too much. There we go. Nice. So I wanted to have a doorway here, but the door kept clipping with that wall. So we're going to have to change it up and use these half walls instead of that one full size wall. And I can just use the uh, half walls to snap everything in place just to give me something to line up this other wall with. And using the same technique that we use with the full wall there. And then once that's in place, we can remove this middle wall and then that's where the door can go. Just close up the gap just slightly. And then now we can grab the door and put it in place. I really like the uh, the bookcase door. I don't know, just a nice little hidden room. I'm really a big fan of building these hidden rooms. And then just closing up the gaps a little bit, moving the walls in place. There we go. Now we have to cover up the gaps, uh, you know, above the half walls there. And we can just use more half walls and just kind of glitch them together. Of course, you know, that is going to create a little bit of a seam, but, you know, boards nailed together have a seam, so it doesn't bother me that much. It's just a matter of getting the height right, just to block out all the light, keep this room nice and hidden. Nice. For the small gap above the door, we can just use some of these wood railings, or, well, one of these wood railings. And it's just a matter of getting the height right, lining it up, so it doesn't clip with the door too much. Um, now it is going to clip through the ceiling a little bit, but we can cover that up with some crates. Just a couple more pieces and we will be ready for the tour. So we're going to make a little platform here for a guard to stand watch over the settlement. And again, we're going to use some of these quarter boards. Just glitching one in place and then snapping the one next to it. Nice. Now, I've definitely shown you guys this technique before, and we're basically just going to use some of these uh, wood pillars from the Homemaker mod, and we're just going to glitch two of them together, 
um, just so that it's, uh, you know, making contact with the awning there and then also, uh, you know, supporting the platform for the guard. You, know, you can't have floating platforms. It just looks off. Well, with the pillars in place, now we can attach some corrugated steel to them and create a makeshift billboard for the uh, bar here. Just a matter of lining it up, keeping it from clipping through, at least on the front. Nice. Back up to the guard platform. We're going to need a little something to protect that guard. Now I tried railings and crates and I ended up going with uh, sandbags. They look like they could provide a little bit more protection and, you know, catch some bullets. But they also um, allow you to kind of curve the uh, barrier. It just looks a little more natural. Plus, I like sandbags. Now, I had the hardest time figuring out what to do with these little cubbies up here. Um, eventually, I ended up turning them into little storage areas as well as a couple of uh, sleeping areas. And so basically, I just took a bunch of different wood bits, the shack walls, as well as wooden railings, and just kind of layered them on top of each other until most of the gaps were filled. Now, it's okay to have some gaps. Um, they are kind of makeshift structures. Um, the main thing is to make sure that they don't clip through the side of the roof there. It's okay if they clip through a little bit, but if they clip through too much, it just looks off. Uh, these things ended up looking really cool. Uh, you'll see here in a second when we get to the tour. As you approach the main house, uh, at least from this side, the first thing you'll see is the butcher area. I'm not sure where the butcher is, but you can see all his meats out. This is where you can come and pick up whatever meat you need for your travels or if you're a caravan to bring back to a settlement. You can see he's doing pretty well for himself with all the different kills he has on display. Now going up the stairs here, we come to the first uh, shopping area. And over to the right, we have Doc Weathers and his little uh, surgery stall. You can see he has uh, some chems laid out on the counter for sale. And heading on back here behind the curtain, we have the actual surgery area. Now I believe both of these come from Creative Clutter. Uh, I'll go ahead and list all my mods in a Google Doc in the description. But that is an actual working uh, surgery station there. And of course we have some paperwork and some caps on the ground there. And across the way we have uh, Lucas Miller and his uh, armor station. Now this counter here as well as the armor workbench in the back I actually built. Um, if you guys would be interested in seeing how I built those, uh, go ahead and leave a comment in the description. Uh, it'd be pretty quick for me to throw that video together and upload it for everybody. Now you can see out in the middle here, we have a couple of different armors on display. That one on the left is the Black Widow armor. That's one of my favorite um, modded armors. It just looks really cool. Now the back side of the counter here, you can see he has uh, his ammo and of course uh, an assault rifle there for protection. And over here we have various clothing and armor he has for sale. Different helmets and whatnot laying about. And that brings us to the armor workstation. Different chemicals as well as, you know, components for building armor. Looks like he has a couple of helmets there that he's working on. Maybe a, a little bit of combat armor as well. And then in the corner here, there's a protect po protectron. I really can't say that word for some reason. And then of course, uh, some robot armor here that he's putting together a full set, it looks like. Got some pretty cool posters on the wall. Um, that's a mod I just downloaded. Um, the name does escape me, but again, I'll list all the mods in the description. And then coming out here, we have quite a few guards. Um, there's a lot of caps running through this place, and they're going to need plenty of protection in addition to the Minutemen support. Now coming along this way, we have more uh, salvage sitting about. 
Looks like uh, they just found a washing machine. Get the handyman to fix that up. That'll uh, bring in quite a few caps. Or maybe open a laundromat. Who knows? Clara is pretty resourceful. She's the ghoul that runs this place. Of course, you have some boarded up windows here on the warehouse. Don't want any prying eyes. And this is where the real money is made. Now, nobody's allowed in here, and that's why the windows are boarded up, and there's a guard at the door. This is where most of Clara's money comes from. You can see there, there's some vault tech salvage in the corner and a boat here ready to deliver some munitions up the river then over here we have more weaponry waiting to be sold looks like a fat man as well as uh, quite the stash of mini nukes more ammo over here as well as a cryolator that's got to be worth quite a few caps and of course a uh, weapons workbench there for modding any weapons before they're sold. Looks like she even managed to steal a safe. And then just more supplies ready for sale there. I'm really happy with the way this warehouse turned out. Um, I actually had to shrink this boat with the console to get it to fit in here. The full-size boat just kept clipping with the door. Let's head out and check out the rest of the main house. Before we go inside, we'll walk along the perimeter here. Now on the left-hand side, you can see the docks we built in a previous video, where Clara and her employees live. And then, of course, uh, we have some benches facing that, as well as uh, some seating area here across from the hotel. Here we have an ice machine. That actually uh, will turn your drinks to ice cold drinks, or yeah, ice cold versions. Here we have a paying customer heading towards his table. Looks like he has some food and some beer set out. It's quite a nice spread if you ask me, at least for the apocalypse. Now let's uh, take a look inside the bar, shall we? So here we are heading up to the bar. You can see here we have some uh, Vim as well as some Nuka-Cola. Clara has quite a few caps, so she's able to secure uh, something as exotic as Vim here in the Commonwealth. Look at that bar. Oh, that just looks great. Of course, you have some advertisements for cigarettes and alcohol on the wall. This is a bar, after all. Walking over this way, we can see some tables set out. Looks like it's a pretty popular place. A lot of food and drinks laid out on the table. Looks like this guy spilled his beer. Now, coming around this way, we have a little uh, stage area where we have live music most nights. That comes from a mod, uh, Singing Settler. You can actually assign a settler to that um, microphone and they provide happiness for the settlement. It's pretty cool. And over here, we have a seating area for the entertainment. Looks like we might have a Medex addict. Now, coming around this way, we can head over to the area where the actual bar is. Looks like they converted the kitchen into a working bar. That's kind of fitting. Here we have the bartender with her clipboard, ready to take your order. Of course, there's more uh, advertisements on the wall and a Meyer Alert King. I really like that shelf uh, made out of the fat man that's on the wall. It really fits with uh, Clara being a weapons dealer, has access to, of course, parts that maybe can't be fixed. Might as well use them as a shelf. 
you can see uh, this bar is pretty well stocked. Nuka-Cola and water, even uh, barrels of beer. That, that sink's actually a scrapping station. I don't have anyone assigned to it yet, but that's pretty cool. Looks like uh, we have a meal out here getting prepped. And then over this way, we have a cigarette machine. Yeah, you can buy most things here at Tappington Outpost. And then across from the bar, we have a poker game going on. I had a lot of fun putting the poker game together. Um, now the cards actually come from a mod, uh, Creative Clutter. I did place most of those caps down, although some of those did come from Creative Clutter as well. Really happy with the way it turned out. Looks like the guy uh, on the upper right there is losing most of his caps. Yeah, what are you going to do? Luck can be a harsh mistress. Yeah, the posters on the wall really add to the atmosphere. I especially like the uh, movie posters there. Oh, another patron. Wow, this place is uh, really busy. Now let's head upstairs uh, away from the riffraff and uh, check out the VIP area. Of course, there's a guard on duty there keeping everybody in line and here is the VIP section they have their own uh, private stash of alcohol and some seating away from the crowds and then in here we have Clara's office now she's been around for a long time and so uh, in the case here, we have the Treasures of Jamaica Plain. Now that, you know, would actually mean something to her, because she was around before the war. And here on the desk, we have uh, some caps and gold. And if you remember from the previous video, um, she's quite the comic book fan, as well as uh, a book fan. So we have plenty of both just laying about in her office. Of course, there's a ham radio there for communication with any of her employees that are out making deliveries. And here behind the bookshelf, we have her own private stash of, well, valuables. In case of emergency, buy a mini nuke. Solves all your problems. Looks like there's a Pip-Boy on the shelf. Not sure where she was able to get one of those, but I'm imagining with that many caps, you're able to acquire one. And then over here, we have some valuables on display, as well as most of her money safely tucked away behind a bookshelf. I had a lot of fun putting this little uh, room together. Well, the whole office, really. Oh. And a Meyer Lurk Hunter there as well. That must have been quite the battle. I really love those curtains too. I could have fit a door in there, but the curtains, I don't know. They just fit the theme better, I guess. Yeah, they look pretty cool. Now let's head up to the roof and check out... Uh, where the Minutemen um, have set up camp. Clara invited the Minutemen here to help her protect this trading outpost. It just made business sense to have extra troops here and all it took was a little bit of space on the roof. The Minutemen are here to protect the outpost to help promote growth amongst the settlements in this part of the Commonwealth and have a safe place for caravans to meet and trade goods so that they can bring them back to the growing settlements in the area. They converted these cubbies into storage areas. Looks like this one here is housing some munitions as well as some medical supplies. And then two of them have been converted into bunks. Now I imagine the Minutemen that are stationed here 
rotate through pretty regularly. Looks like uh, this guy just arrived. Doesn't have a lot of personal effects laying around. Just a mattress in there. Though it does look like he has a meal ready. A little bit of jet set out as well. Here we have uh, one of the Minuteman guards keeping an eye out. And then on this side we have the other bunk. A little bit of storage outside. Looks like this guy's been here for a little while. We have some personal effects on the ground. Looks like uh, we have a Nuka-Cola Wild and the Perception bobblehead there in the corner. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see videos about this length uploaded as frequently as I have been, or if you'd rather see shorter videos uploaded more frequently. Subscribe if you want to see when my next video goes live. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be back at Starlight, although I'm not 100% sure how to continue that settlement, so we'll see where I build next. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video, and until then... Enjoy your time in the Commonwealth.